you were told that you couldn't have children. Yes. And how many are you on now? Number seven, you oh, say? Right, isn't it? <laughs> so that's why we give thanks. We don't Amen. say it. We, right. we just give thanks. Hello and welcome back to the Woman of Faith Kitchen Table Talk. Today we are around the table in Bedfordshire, we're in Shakira's home. If you've been watching my podcast, then you know that we've been on a series called Faith Needed. So we've spoken about the faith needed to be a woman, to be single, the faith needed to be a mother, and today we're talking about the faith needed to be pregnant. <laughs> I am not pregnant, thankfully, but we have two lovely <laughs> pregnant ladies here. And obviously I have been pregnant. So we're gonna just, we're gonna talk about that today and it's gonna be a great conversation. If you don't already, please subscribe to my channel. We've got lots of stuff pertaining to just being a Christian woman. So please subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can see when I upload new videos. You can follow me on Instagram at womanoffaith underscore D1. Now I'm gonna allow these lovely ladies to introduce themselves. We're gonna start with you. You are? <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Matthew Marius. I am a wife, I am a mother to five, nearly six, and also I have a bonus baby, not a baby, she's a big girl now, um, as well, so that's going to be seven, that's a lot. Um, I homeschool, I life school, I am a coach as well to mums, and I also help my husband run our family business, so I do quite a few things. Women of many talents. Many, many hats. Many hats. <laughs> Okay, and how many weeks pregnant are you? Oh, I think we were just trying to figure this out. Yeah. Really. <laughs> uh, well, I'm about seven months. I don't know. Seven months. Seven months. Okay, seven, seven months pregnant. Ish. Yeah, so you're... I'm due soon. Okay, good. And um, any, are there going to be any more pregnancies after listen, this? we're not talking about seven, it. Seven we're seven not, children. Listen, no? the quiver, okay. quiver is full. That's what you're <laughs> A full quiver is seven. That will be seven. We should be... You're good. Of, yeah, you should be good. Yeah, okay. I mean, I've been saying, I'm not saying it anymore because every time I say I'm not, I'm finished, the Lord just provides it. Okay, so you're, you're just you're just trusting in the Lord for whatever next, yeah? yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Shakira Harriet. I'm also a wife. I homeschool my three children, soon to be four children. I'm 18 weeks pregnant, so like four and a half months, I think that is. I also, I used to be a teacher, a primary school teacher, but I'm currently homeschooling my children, so sometimes I, well, I do tutor. I also do, I have a ministry of my own um, with a few of my friends. Um, we have like lots of different things that we do, like Bible book club and all kinds of different things that we organise. Um, so always busy with that. And yeah, that's me. Okay, great. Um, if you're just watching or listening for the first time, I am a mum to five, four biological children. Um, so even though I'm not pregnant right now, I have had a lot of experience being pregnant. And I'd say we've got a lot of experience here about being pregnant. Oh, yeah. I'd say we're, <laughs> we're qualified for this conversation. <laughs> yeah. okay. So we were created with a womb, obviously. Um, so you could say that our purpose as a woman is to be a mother. However, some women don't want children. Some women can't have children. And some women just shouldn't be mothers, keeping it real. So could we then still say that our purpose as a woman is to be a mother? And if yes, what about the things that I just mentioned? I'm going to go to Shakira first. I think it's difficult to say that your purpose is one specific thing, um, just as you know, male and female, because the reality is everyone has a different purpose. And to say that all women, um, their purpose is to be a mother. I think I don't necessarily agree with that, even though I believe that all women have a certain maternal instinct mm. that God has placed in us. So like to be nurturers. Um, I see it with, I've actually got three daughters. Um, this is going to be my fourth daughter. So it's um, a girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I was so sick. We were on. We honestly believed it was a boy, but this is another girl. So you know, my poor husband. Yeah, <laughs> outnumbered. <laughs> exactly. Um, but you've just seen with them, just the way that they nurtured their younger sisters mm. um, is really, really sometimes strange. So I remember placing my two-year-old when she was about seven months. She was starting to sit up and all of that. So I sat her down um, and she was sitting there and she started to like fall back. And my um, my seven-year-old was like, I told you you shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> And I'm just like, well, you've got to try, you know? <laughs> and so I'm having to mother with my children. Um, and they're not mothers. Um, and they may never be mothers, you know? Um, I don't know what God has for their lives. And so to say that it's our purpose um, is a difficult one. Like you said, like God may not open some wombs um, and some women don't want to be mothers. So realistically, for that to just be our sole purpose, mm. I think it puts us in a box yeah. that we don't really need to be in. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I think that we all have the capacity. Obviously, you've got a room, you have the capacity to be a mum, but that doesn't make you, yeah, that doesn't make it your purpose necessarily. Um, because not everyone is a biological mum as well mm-hmm. at the same time. That That's where that nurture stuff comes in. You have a nurturing instinct. Actually, not even all women have that. It's weird. Mm-hmm. True. It's weird when I see women that don't have it. I'm like, what happened (laughs) and I think that is that is like a like a generational something that didn't really happen properly for you there's something that happened in your upbringing that stopped you from having that nurturing Mm -hmm. instinct yeah whether it be you weren't raised by your mum it was just a very traumatic experience and that's why I think some women also don't want to become mums yeah and so then I would say it's not everyone's purpose to be a mother even though you have a womb. I felt, for me, I felt like I always wanted to be a mum. Same. <laughs> I always wanted to be a mum. The reason I ask that question is because I think, um, especially when we look at the Bible, we ask this um, in our single podcast, we ask the question, is our purpose to be a wife? Mm-hmm. Looking at Adam and Eve, the woman who is not married or may not get married mm. and may feel like well this is this this was the blueprint mm-hmm. the blueprint was we get married we have children and, and I guess that's that's kind of what society expects is going to happen so as a woman who has a womb there might there might be this even pressure to think well I'm supposed to have a child mm-hmm. or if you're able to have children then like I'm not fulfilling what it is that I'm right. even supposed that's, to be doing that's even worse culturally as well yeah. depending on where you come from like you're that old and you haven't had children mm-hmm. yet, oh, yeah. or you're married what's happening what's going on why yeah, do yeah, you have yeah. Yeah. yeah especially as soon as you get married so it's when you have a child yeah. and then once that one child wins the next one so let yeah, me yeah. just let me I probably, just I probably been guilty of that. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> to whoever I said that to. Let me just sit for Andy. a while, please. Let me just. The womb needs to heal and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. We're not yeah. thinking about the next one yet. Yeah. <laughs> just thinking about like biblically and I guess purpose as well. Um, the reality is our purpose was set in the Garden of Eden, but mm. then sin came in. Came in. Right. Yeah. And so when we look at our purpose, yes, we have a purpose, um, but because of sin, you know sometimes that is very different now Mm. um and it can look different for every family every woman um every man every child um because unfortunately because of sin we literally cannot say that you know every woman is supposed to be um a mother like you said you know trauma like people go through so much trauma that actually the fear of having a child um is just not on the like it's just yeah it would just be the worst thing even for the child I've taught so many children um when I was so I taught for seven years before I started homeschooling my children and the children that I taught the amount of children that I've experienced that have been abused Mm. by their mothers you know like people around them Mm -hmm. you just think like like you can't even comprehend like when you hear and you have to read the story so you deal with them properly and accordingly Mm. and my heart used to break um thinking that how can a mother allow this to happen to her child and the reality is sin right yeah 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 and i think also in the garden the purpose was given but it wasn't obviously it was it was to be fruitful and multiply but i think all the time we always think of just having babies not just being fruitful god Mm. didn't say like 
specifically the fruit was in having children like you already have fruit like the gift and stuff that he's given you like be mm. fruitful in those things multiplying yeah, yeah, yeah. those things replenish yeah. those things use that to replenish the earth that's what he's saying mm. so not just in babies so purpose isn't just about having babies and part of our purpose as women is to help to help birth the things like not just the baby but help birth the dream help mm. an, like to birth a, another woman's baby like mm. physically and then you know a supportive role yeah, yeah like yeah. you know we help each other if you've got a dream you've got something that you're doing like, i support okay, you yeah, to yeah, birth yeah. that as well yeah. Yeah. i think our purpose is so much bigger than that than but physically that's physically yeah yeah because if you just that's very limited that's a very mm, yeah. box like you were saying Shakira, like that's it i'm just here to make babies yeah but and also just, with that is because you said you always wanted to be a mother mm-hmm. and you know like where where does that desire come from okay so we we see perhaps maybe we see our mothers or we, we play with dollies when we're when we're little but then I, I kind of not until i had children that i actually thought i didn't actually think this through i didn't actually not to right. say that i regretted it right. or anything, but yeah, it was just yeah. like so much responsibility yeah so much, yeah. So much it to do this yeah it wasn't enough that was just like look at me like i want to be pregnant i want to be pregnant and then like okay there's a lot that comes with mm-hmm. this that actually um it shouldn't just be a given uh-uh. it shouldn't be a given with any woman that yes well i have a womb therefore i should be a mother mm-hmm. there should be some some careful consideration and just because you get married as well that doesn't necessarily mean okay now we're married so let's have baby. children yeah you know and and not, not, not i'm saying that there's anything wrong with desiring a family or wanting mm-hmm. to have mm-hmm. children but just with any decision we make, even the decision to get married or, you know, the decision to, to start a family, that needs to have some careful consideration. It's serious. Mm. Yeah. It's serious. And I think a lot of people, I've seen people who are like, they're not, they're not in relationships, that, but they've had the child and they walk away from a relationship. I said, you walked away from a relationship, but the children are a bigger commitment than having a relationship. They're forever. Like, yeah. literally, they're forever. And are they like ever? <laughs> <laughs> forever ever like for real? And I just, I just, it baffles me at how people can be like, I'm, I just want a baby, I just want to have a baby, and they'll just have a baby, and but they don't need the rest of the support network, the rest of this, the family setup. It's just very strange because that is a full time commitment. But the desire is very strong. You know, the desire to have a child is very strong. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, I have to put up my own hands because I, so I was married previously and I was, I was talking about us having another child because I wanted another child, knowing that our marriage wasn't doing very well. Mm-hmm. And I see it in lots of other women as well, this very focused dedication to wanting to have a baby where mm-hmm. everything else goes out the window, like nothing Just else is important. Single focus. Yeah. And so therefore considering what's this going to be like? What kind of mother am I going to be like? How is this going to be? You know, those kind of things don't come to mind. So it's, it's like, is this desire given to us by God? You know, because it is a very strong desire. Like we want yeah. to have children. I want to have children. Mm. But I feel like each, each thing you've said, you know, the whole wife, mother, you know, All of those things are very different desires and they're all very separate. I mean, I've always wanted to be a wife um, and a mother, but I always saw that as together. But like Mm -hmm. Nicole, you were saying, in our society, it's not this package. It's like you can have, it doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think the desire is in us, but sometimes we have to question that desire. So are we saying that we desire to have a child because we feel it or because we see it? Mm-hmm. So like my children, we, <laughs> we caught them the other day. Um, my husband heard them in the room and they, well, they were supposed to have gone to bed. So he goes in and he, he says like, girls, like, what are you doing? Basically, they were praying to God that they would, he would place babies in their bellies. <gasps> Yeah, they're six and seven. Um, <laughs> in time, yeah. dears. In well, I mean, at least they pray about it. Yeah, they pray about it. They pray about these things first. They pray about it. Girl, in time, in yeah. time, girl. And at the beginning, um, I had quite a lot of, like, what? I was quite... Anxiety. Like, yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> You're just like, oh, my gosh, that's all they think about. Like, wanting to have babies and all of these kind of things. And I used to think it was down to, like, like Disney and mm-hmm. all the movies that you kind of grow up in yeah, yeah. watching. My children have never seen any of those movies. Like, mm-hmm. we don't do those things. We don't like it. And so I was like, 
it's actually natural. Yeah. <laughs> it's really natural because everywhere, like all around them, they just want to be mm. But then mothers. also they look up to their mummy. So they want to be yeah. like mummy and mummy has babies. That's what happened with me. <laughs> Lots of babies. Well, is, when she was like, I think five, around five-ish, she was like, I want to be just like you. I want to be a mum. And I was like, ah! <laughs> Shock horror, what are you talking about? You're five years old. That's, and my husband was like, that's it. No dollies, no babies, yeah. no nothing. We're not doing this. We're not having this. Let's get some books and yeah, get yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> all that kind of stuff. That's the, we're taking all, words, all that princessy girly stuff. That's yeah. it. No more of it. And then we spoke to her, one of our cousins. And that's what she, literally what she said. She was like, no, what you're, what you're forgetting, what you're not realising is that you're a very good role model. So what she sees in you, that's what she wants to emulate. She wants mm. to be like you. And I was like, mm. oh, baby. Mm. <laughs> you wouldn't be like mama. You wouldn't be like me. So then that also helped me to be, I need to be at a certain level for her to emulate. They're very mm. good children, are very good imitators. Let's give mm. them something good to imitate. Mm. Okay. But then also then as they get older and perhaps, you know, like you're, you know, like you said, you help husband with business and you're a coach, you know, you're doing all this extra stuff, you're doing ministry, they see that too. Yeah. yeah. And so hopefully as they get older, they're like, actually, mum does ministry and mum runs business and you know, so it, it, it goes beyond well, the, the I just want to be a mum. With- with um, the, our eldest one as well, isn't it? Because she started our own lip balm business because oh. daddy was running a business, mummy was helping her. So she was like, I want to I want to buy my own stuff. I'm just going to make a lip balm. So she just, that's yeah, what she did. Yeah. And so it inspired her. So yeah. literally what they see around them is what Yeah, and that Jasmine wants a YouTube channel now. She's, she's in the mo- She's like, we're, we're making pancakes together. Mummy, let's do a we've YouTube got, channel. Like, wow. Okay, so we're making pancakes <laughs> today. <laughs> do that pretend thing. That's so cute. <laughs> And I think, you know, when you were talking, it actually made me think about the whole nature nurture thing. Mm -hmm. So then if we consider nature our desires and things like that and just how we feel naturally, actually nurture is a lot more. It has a it has a bigger contribution Mm -hmm. um, because I guess dependent upon your environment will depend upon your desires. Um, Because actually, when you look at some people, they've grown up in homes. So in my um, family, um, because we're um, Indian Jamaican, so my grandma got married at the age, no, my great grandma got married, I think she was like 13. Oh, wow. Yeah, really, really young, because it was like an arranged marriage, but then, like, the rest of my family have just all got married and had children. So it was the kind of thing that we just followed. So yeah, it was just. That's what you do. It was a standard. Mm. Um, and, but I know, like, with like other people, that may not be how they've been brought up. And so yeah. it's difficult to say that it's a desire, because actually, my desire was to. To, I can't even lie, I wanted to be a housewife. I, I like, I literally did my degree, my master's. With um, intention of, yeah. I'm not using it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to use this. <laughs> literally. Um, I, but you want to be an intelligent, <laughs> intelligent yeah. housewife. And literally, that is it. Um, and so I taught, I had plans to go to Dubai and do all of these things. Um, but then I met my husband. And, you know, I was like, all right, it's time to go. <laughs> yeah, let's get cracking. Let me put but that yeah. away. <laughs> and I was okay with that, though. Mm-hmm. I was okay with being in my career and then kind of... Exiting. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's good, man. Mm. Yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, if you know what you want, you know, you know what you want. Um, so let's talk about the women who, who have that desire and they're not able to get pregnant or they're struggling to get pregnant. Yeah. because that almost can make the desire even more so mm. when you can't get that thing that you really want. Mm. Now, I know you both have got some interesting stories. I'm going to start with you, Nicole. <laughs> you were told that you couldn't have children. Yes. And how many are you on now? Number seven, you oh, say? Already, isn't it? So that's why we give thanks. We don't then, say it. We, right. we just give thanks. So when I was 18, so I... It's, we've got a history within our family that they everyone all the women seem to have some kind of irregular cycles mm. something's wrong with them they have it's too heavy it's not there it's, it's spot, i don't know it's just all over the place and so i just never had a regular cycle mm. growing up i just see i'm around all these girls and everybody else is getting theirs regular and i'm just like where's mine i was kind of feeling a little bit left out by mm. then at the same time i was like well I can wear white and the rest of you can't. <laughs> I can you know, swim in. I can just swim in anytime. <laughs> you know, and I just, so I kind of just embraced that mm. because it's just, that was my norm. Yeah. Um, but when I started getting older, I said, kind of need to figure this thing out. So at 18, I, um, they sent me for these tests and stuff and then came back. Basically, you have PCOS, but like a very severe case. Like, you probably won't have children. If you're going to have them, like, like it will be very hard 
So don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't don't bank on it happening because it's gonna be like it would just be more traumatic for you. So I was like, at eighteen, I was like, cool. I kind of was like, you was okay with I'm, it. I'm eighteen. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not sure. About okay. I'm not thinking about mm. marriage necessarily or anything yet. Mm. And so I was like, okay. Like it was like water off a duck's back. Didn't yeah. really bother me at all. But if, when I started getting older. When I met my husband, 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 the husbandman, and I was just like, growing up with him already because I knew him from before. He just wanted a huge family. He always wanted a football team. Wow. So when we got back, when we got together, and I was like, baby, I don't we think we're gonna talk. be, yeah, yeah. I don't think we're gonna be able to have children. <laughs> he was like, what are you talking about? I said, yeah. Well, they told me when I was eighteen, I kind of won't be able to. And he was like, don't worry about it. We'll just adopt some children. I was like, really, oh. <laughs> baby? But he. I think in his in the back of his mind, he didn't think that I was being very serious. Like he, mm. I don't think he he, even though he he's still open to like adoption and stuff now, but I don't think he realised what I was actually saying at that time. Mm. Like I don't think like listen, mm. dude, there are no I don't have mm. periods. I don't there there is no cycle for me to be like I might be. I'm not sure if there was none of that. Mm. And so he, but I don't yeah I just don't think he was very apparent to him mm. but, so you, I, but you believed that the diagnosis you believed that i'm probably not going to have children yeah i just thought probably not because where's the evidence of it i'm not even having a period so how yeah. would i even how would i even have yeah. a baby yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's just like it's that's just how it is mm. and so um i just poured a lot into all the other children that are around me i have like millions of godchildren and nieces and nephews and i started to look after all of these children yeah. it's that nurture thing yeah, that yeah. i have it's within me instinct yeah. so i just yeah I just poured into these children so when i became pregnant i d- i didn't even know 13 weeks i found out wow <laughs> wow 13 weeks. so it's There's not no like sign. so he wasn't like let's just try and let's see try if let's have a baby not, nope. was praying for the listen Lord, i would like the, to have a baby when i so i prayed <laughs> i prayed i think maybe in like the sept i don't even know maybe like a september i found out in november that i was pregnant but i was praying and i was like lord you know daryl was a baby yeah <laughs> you know he oh, was so a I said, you know, he baby i was like lord Aww. can you just give me one i literally hannah is my like she's my yeah. hannah is my story that is she is my story that's that's what i resonate with the most in the bible mm. i was like lord if you just give me one I would dedicate that <laughs> one to you forever and ever. They'll be, that's it. They're your child. They're not even my child. I just, just borrowed. I'm just borrowing that child. Yeah. I'm praying that prayer, not realizing I was already pregnant though. Wow. And so when I found out, I was like, look, you're funny. Yeah. <laughs> funny way of answering these things. And I didn't. Before even, you have even asked, mm, my child. And I just, I didn't even, I, I probably wouldn't even had done a test. I was, I spoke to my friend and she was like, let's do a test. And Why? Because at the time I was vegan and I really wanted chicken. <laughs> I had no desire for chicken before, but I specifically wanted KFC two chicken legs. <laughs> I was like, this is very strange. She's like, Nick, let's just do a pregnancy test. Let's get it over and done with. And I'm just there like, whatever. She's like, I'm buying them. Just get to my house. Let's do it. Didn't tell Daryl anything. Because I'm like, I can't I can't tell him this stuff mm. unless I know, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and so that's what I did. I went, I bought the two chicken legs, being a vegan. <laughs> Bought the two chicken legs, ate them on the way to her house. Mm. And then so when I took the test, it took like two seconds. The thing just shoot up and said, pregnant, three plus wow. weeks. I said, yeah. wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. I said this is a joke. Then so she bought a two pack and she said, take it home, do the other one. I took the test home when I showed it down. I was like, Ta, Ta, I've got something to show you. Aww. And I said, he's like, Ooh. He was just Aww. like, no. Aww. He's like, do another one. You gotta do another one. <laughs> we did the other one. The next day he was like, do another one. Oh do God. another one. <laughs> but it was just like, I was so, I was like overwhelmed at the same time because I'm like, but they said, mm-hmm. they said I wouldn't be able to have, and I'm not trying. I wasn't trying mm. because I didn't think. But you wanted. But I wanted to mm. at the same time, mm. and I knew Daryl wanted to. And how old was you at at that time? Twenty four. Okay. Yes, because I had her at 25, yeah, mm. so 24. And I was just like, Lord, what, what is this? Like, what, is, what miracles are you working here? Mm. Because I didn't have a period. I didn't have, there was nothing. So how did you just open the womb <laughs> like that? How do you do these things, Lord? There was well, no I mean, signs or symptoms. He created you, so you can figure it out. 
Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And then wow. I guess since then, there's been how many of a there's a thousand of them now. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the gap in between our first one and the second one was five years. And I, in that time, I desired to have another child, mm. but there was no other child. And I was mm. like, oh, well, maybe this is the one that I prayed for and that's going to be it. <laughs> yeah. then, okay, Lord, okay, what you asked for. Yeah, I said, okay, so, well, that will be it then, okay. And as soon as I got to that point where I was like, okay, Lord, if that's it, he just opened my room again. And I was like, wow. Mm. And then the rest of them so, were just... So for the second one, would you, would you say that you was praying for a second one or was mm. you just accepting... Not in the same the way. The first one might have been a fluke. Yeah, I was just like, that's it. I just, I got to... Because I wanted another one. I think mm. we did pray a few times and stuff, but... What's like, happening? But this time we're actively trying to have another yeah, yeah, one and yeah, there's yeah, nothing. Yeah. I just... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Lord, well, maybe that's what you actually desire for us then. Okay, well, we'll just have the one. Mm. But then, obviously, we've got the two because Daryl had a previous, the one from the previous relationship. So, we've got two girls. So, I was like, well, we'll just have to be satisfied with the two girls then, isn't it? Mm. I was like, even though we'd like a boy, Lord, you know, every so often I just throw that in. They just, we'd, we'd just like a boy. <laughs> We're not being greedy. But... Yeah. <laughs> just one, you know. But there, do you think there's something in the accepting your fate accepting you know what if this is what god has decided if god god has decided just one or if god has decided none you know do you think there's something in in that kind of having trust and faith in god regardless of if you don't get the thing that you want i think definitely it it brought me a level of peace actually Mm. where i was just like well you know at the end of the day lord you know what's best so if i have or i don't have yeah, you've got mm. this all in, in your hands. You've got the whole world in your hands. You've got the whole, everything under your control anyway. So, yeah, I just got to the point where I was like, I'm not going to try anymore. Mm. Because mm. there's no point in me trying because I can't make it happen. <laughs> Clearly, yeah. if I could, yeah. then, you know. Yeah. And with that, just that peace, that level of peace came. And I just feel like in no time, there was, there was the boy. Wow. <laughs> Which everyone was like, you can't have boys because... Daryl's family always have girls and we had we had boys and I was like ha ha in your face (laughs) (laughs) and then so then the ones after that was just like well God just whatever you decide that's why you're not stopping that's why you're like no 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 so so (laughs) so it's 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 weird because I wanted so we wanted a boy we had the boy and we were like we're cool we're just having that's it we're good now we've got a boy boy and a girl boy two girls the two girls and a boy that's great we're great now we've got like legacy we've got a boy that can carry on the name we've yeah, got a girl yeah. and so we just yeah we were just fine and then i did imagine i just i did a detox like a cleanse thing and i just got pregnant with the second boy just like that boom just wow literally i was, I was like oh okay okay lord another <laughs> one and then we were like okay lord we're, we're good now we're finished we are finished. <laughs> we're, we're finished. Me and me and Dad looked at each other. We're finished. We're finished. Shook on it. Everything. We're good. We're ready. We're, we're ready to just be parents to the four of them. And then I just had this desire within me again. I was like, baby, I think I want another one. He was like, no, no. <laughs> we were here. We agreed. <laughs> like, well, you know. And then I was like. But I know, but I just feel like I want another one. And at that time, I was actually pregnant okay. with wow. the next one. <laughs> Didn't know. And you have a similar story, don't you? Yeah, I mean, wow, your story is, <laughs> I mean, my story seems really minor now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you, did you think you couldn't have children? Yeah, so I was at the age of 19 mm. and they diagnosed me with PCOS. Mm. Um and so I remember thinking, all right, I'm not going to worry about it too tough. But I was upset. Mm. I was upset because my sister, she's seven years older than me. So she had kids well before me. Mm-hmm. So I just thought, oh, this is a bit, like, I felt uncomfortable, but I just kind of sat with it. And then when I met my husband, before he became my husband and, you know, before we took anything any further, um, so we just, it was very early. I actually made a disclaimer to him that I may not be able to have children. Mm -hmm. So think about this before we kind of continue this relationship. And he was like, you know, I I don't care about that. We love that. Yeah, literally. Um, And so I was like, okay. Um, And so that was really nice to know that he just said that I'll be enough for him. 
and we'll kind of like review like as we get older. We like him. Yeah. We like him. <laughs> yeah, it was really nice. It was really nice. And so uh, we got married. I was 25. And then, yeah, I just, I kind of intentionally was like then trying to have a child. Mm. Um, but I didn't want to like say anything because I didn't want to get like myself excited, even though I knew I was trying, like yeah, it's really yeah, yeah. strange. So you wanted um, it. Was you praying about it? Yeah, so I prayed about it. And Did you believe that it was going to happen? I just didn't have a clue. Okay. Um, um, but I did pray about it. And every every period I would cry. Like, mm. literally. Every single month I would cry, just thinking, oh, not again. I remember um, speaking to my friends about it, actually. Um, and literally, we spoke about it. And <laughs> we went away for our anniversary our uh, one year anniversary and we went for a meal and I felt so sick mm. like literally so sick and actually I feel that I'm pregnant the day that it happens mm. so I was just like a mess and you could see I looked tired mm. um and then the something wasn't the right I'm pregnant. <laughs> yeah I was like <laughs> what's going on with me I thought I had food poisoning or something mm. but yeah like when we looked at the date of conception was the like the Same. day before yeah, so i was like, like whoa like wow. i know i'm pregnant like literally straight away oh, look at that. Um, my it's body dark. just <laughs> so when he told me you're i'm like how <laughs> like no my... symptoms whatsoever honestly i Lovely. changed straight away That's straight crazy. away i changed even yeah. like my um my mum and my sister were like wow you've got pregnancy windows already like <laughs> <laughs> i'm wow. like thanks guys <laughs> Like that. Yeah, yeah but nice. yeah, it came real early this time for me. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what happens. But yeah, I had my first and I was like, okay, thank you, Lord. Um, really grateful and live within that blessing. Um, second came along really quickly. And then during COVID, we were like, I'm we we were done with the two. Mm. Um, really, really done. Um, <laughs> I love that. I've been done a few yeah. times. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, I was having like, I had like, um, the implant, but then I was getting a lot of migraines and all of these kind of things. So I had it taken out just before lockdown, mm. March, I had it taken out at the beginning of March and then two weeks later we had locked down. Mm. So no one would give me any other contraception. Mm. So yeah, we were just living on the edge the whole of like, <laughs> <laughs> and then she came like our third. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I was really anxious because I was like, whoa, like three, um, but... And now we're on number four. Yeah, <laughs> but we prayed for um, this one, which okay. is re- because we realized that we wanted either two or four. Mm-hmm. We both actually wanted four. Then after the first, I was like, we can only go with another sibling. <laughs> like, that's it. Um, and we prayed for this one and it was really strange because we waited a very long time. So we wanted there, so between my first and second, there's a year gap. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of wanted like similar so that like our first two are like twins, literally like they just best friends, ride or (laughs) dies, like everything. Um, And then you'll see with like a two year old, she's just sometimes on the the outskirts. I'm like, oh my baby, like you you need someone. And so I'm praying to God. me and my husband discussed it. People at church are like, don't have three. You have to have four. <laughs> and so I'm like, all right, God, you've heard. Um, and nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I remember crying as if, like, come on. Like, Shakira, you've actually got three kids. <laughs> like, why are you crying? Yeah. But I was upset because I believed that I was supposed to have four children. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I was in a place of contentment, that's when it happened. Mm-hmm. So... God had to show me. So he actually told my friend um, for a dream that I was going to have a little girl. Um, but then he showed me that, like, the desire is just one thing, mm. but we have zero creative power. Mm. And it's only God that opens the womb. And so I had to realise that actually, he's right. right. <laughs> I can be like, I've got this app flow. I was like trying to follow yeah, it, yeah, all yeah. of this. Yeah, yeah. He was like babe like forget that 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 that's not gonna work um and so when i realized and he had to show me shakira you do not have the creative power i do Mm -hmm. i had to humble myself and when i humbled myself and i said okay i'm content with the three Mm -hmm. i'll have to be um 
and I'll have to just be my little one's best friend, <laughs> like literally. Um, and he was like, ha there we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I am in control. Yeah. So here, have another one. Exactly. But that remind. It always reminds me of you know that picture. There's like that picture of Jesus with this big bear behind him, and he's got this. The little girl's there, and she's got this little. Bear oh and he's yeah. Like, Give me the bear because you don't know what I've got. I've got mm. something better for you. It's a bit. It just reminds me of that kind of scenario. Like, I've got something for you, but I need you to let go. Submit. I need you mm. to surrender. Mm. Whatever it is that you're holding on to, I need you, that idea, the whatever, it, the desire, I need you to surrender it to me mm. so that I can give you what I really want to give you, what yeah. you actually, what's going to be of more benefit to yeah. you. And actually, it's more than just the baby you're asking for. Right. Mm. You know, because there is like, you know, I think there is, there's purpose. It's not, it's not a game. It's not like I'm going to withhold this from you on purpose. Nope. It's just like, I need you to trust me. I need you to love me. I need you to accept that I'm in control. You know, like, mm. I, you know, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that God is trying to do with it, within us. Mm. And it's not as simple as, I've asked you for this, Lord. I want this, Lord. You know, mm. he's like, <laughs> yeah. okay, but there's some actually stuff that I want you to have mm-hmm. as well as having a baby. And I think we all have to go on this journey um, of him showing us and teaching us that we have to love the giver more than the gift. The gift. Right. right. Um, and he showed me that even when my child was sick in the hospital eight days on oxygen, mm. it was real, real scary and nothing was changing. And they kept up. We were like quarantined in this room and they would look over and see like my three month old. Um, when the consultants and that came in with their whole kit because she had RSV, which is like um, this is like bronchiolitis or something mm-hmm. like that, bronchitis, sorry, um, but like a serious one. Mm-hmm. And with a three-month-old, they can't give them antibiotics or anything, so they were just like, this is really like dangerous. And on the seventh day or the eighth day, I prayed and I said, Lord, if it is Your will, keep mm-hmm. her alive. I said, like, Balin, mm-hmm. and I handed it over. Mm-hmm. The next day she was fine, she came out of hospital. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Just it, like, it was, cra- it was so scary mm-hmm. because I could feel him saying, let her go. Mm-hmm. And I was like, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not Abraham, Lord. <laughs> like, I'm not Abraham. And so, yeah, there's this process I think that we have to go through that actually God is more important Mm -hmm. than even our desires right yeah yeah and that i think you know perhaps there might be some women out there watching that's like that's easy for you guys to say you guys Mm -hmm. have got babies you're pregnant you know but there are some women out there who have perhaps been given a diagnosis or perhaps not but they're just they've been trying they've tried ivf you know they've been praying they've been doing all the stuff following the apps you know, having detoxes, doing all of the stuff <laughs> and still not able to get pregnant. Now, I know this is a very sensitive topic, you know, because we've spoken about this desire and how strong that desire is. And um, so we have, you know, may have had to wait and, you know, go through some stuff, but we eventually was given that baby. What about the women who did not get pregnant or who are not going to get pregnant? Mm. Um, what encouragement can we give to them? Is this the will of God? We spoke about God having the control, God opening up the womb. Why? I mean, it's it's hard to ask the question why, mm. but you know, for them, where do they get their peace? If this is something that they desire, and God has decided not to open their wombs, like, what encouragement can we give? So, the person that came to my mind is Elizabeth. Um, there's quite a few um, actually you've got Samson's mum obviously as well you spoke about Hannah but Elizabeth comes to mind um, because Zachariah and Elizabeth were chosen to have John the Baptist because it said that they were basically good and doing God's will Mm. and so we knew that she was upset that she couldn't have a baby Mm. but she lived within God's will for her life Mm. Um, which is really strange um, in a society where, you know, you kind of, it's conditional. We have to step out of that with God. There can't be conditions because when we kind of place conditions on it, it's, it's difficult. And 
with Elizabeth, you know, she was in those days when you can't have children, it's a different story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Outcast. You know, you're, yeah, outcast, <laughs> you're ridiculed, you're just like you must have seen real bad, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. In order for you to not have children. And so I think the hope is in knowing that your creator has his timing mm. because she was a old old, old woman. woman yeah 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 um sarah was an old sarah. old woman mm-hmm. and that promise was given to them what 20 years before <laughs> i don't even know how many years before long time. about the one <laughs> child you know um and so we have to sit in that space of if it's god's will for my life then i will have children mm. because actually like children us <laughs> they're not easy mm. And actually, God knows, ex- like, he knows everything. And so he knows what our lives are going to look like. And we just have to trust that process. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it can seem like, oh, well, you can say that you've got your kids. But actually, I had to realise that. Uh, and I'm still realising that um, now that I have to, because even with my, like I said, my daughter with allergies, you know, she's very unwell. Um, and I'm grateful I homeschool her because constantly in that of hospital and doctor's appointments and all of these things but it's God's will for her life and our lives Mm -hmm. and I have to just accept that Mm -hmm. and live within that and so for people and for women that they just have that desire they have to really give that desire because the bible says asking you'll receive Mm -hmm. and But there's the, when you look at the context of all of that. It's according to his will. It's according to his will. Living within his will. Because if we're living outside of his will, and he gives us something, and if it, it, what's the name? Was it Rachel? Mm. She shouldn't have had a second child. (laughs) (laughs) Do you know what I mean? But she wanted a second child. Mm. And look at what happened to her. She had her second child, was going to give him some bad breed name because she's saying like, you know, you're the reason why I'm about to die. Mm. Um, because I'm having you when you ask for him. Yeah. <laughs> and so we have to really ask ourselves why. And that's, mm. yeah. Because that's what I, I was going to say. Um, I think it's back to purpose as well. So God doesn't create anything by accident. Mm. And so even though you have a desire, which he also created, he put in us desires. That's a good mm-hmm. point. He gives us the desires of our heart, but he also he gives us the things to desire but he also gives us the things that we desire if you understand what i'm saying yeah and and again if it aligns with his purpose then yes then it will become whatever you bear the fruit Mm. because no person is here by accident even whoever it is that's on this earth they don't walk here by accident Mm. they're not alive here for no reason yeah, yeah. they might not know their purpose mm. because of sin and all the nonsense and stuff like that but everyone is here and they have a purpose mm. so if god saw it fit that you your womb isn't open then there's enough there's a purpose for you mm. there's still a purpose for you and i think um figuring that out will give you the, your biggest like your biggest desire because i know that there are some people um i know a lady specifically she was like she long long for children long to have you know um children and have a marriage and stuff like that but it just it just didn't work out for her but her desire was so strong it's like it almost repelled the thing that she wanted Mm -hmm. and that's not what we want either we don't want to be in a place where we're repelling the blessings of the lord like Mm -hmm. you know what i mean you're so like you're so needy wanty grabby grabby that Mm -hmm. it just it doesn't come to you Mm -hmm. and so we have to get to the place where our desires we put our desires before god and then like but but it has to align with his will. So what is your what is your purpose for my life, Lord? If it's not to have children, yeah. then what is it? <laughs> what, what is that thing? Yeah. And that thing is still going to be good because God says, I know the plans that I have for, for you. Right? Mm. And, you know, but I think that there's that element then, like, because there might be some women that says, well, if I can't be a mother, then I'm going to be depressed and miserable for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas God is like, like you just said, but I've got, I've got this other stuff planned I've for you plan. that is going to give you joy, mm. that is going to give you peace, that is going to fulfill you. But because you you think you know what is best and you think you know what you should have, you know, and that's 
there's some letting go there there has to be a letting go and, and a trusting and that is not that's not easy that's not it's easy. not easy like you know let's keep it real it's not mm. easy that accepting especially when like we're talking about stuff that we can't actually see like you're not a mother and you're just picturing yourself being a mother and that's what you picture you can't see it you're using your faith imagination but actually God does see it and God sees actually this is this is something else for you yeah. I, that you can't see so you can I can only see happiness with a baby I can't see happiness without one mm-hmm. you're not able to take your faith past this this desire that you have you can't mm-hmm. be like well actually I could still be happy without mm-hmm. it I could mm-hmm. still be happy with my husband mm-hmm. go traveling do ministry whatever it is that God is gonna is gonna mm-hmm. do for you but yeah, I definitely don't want to take away from how difficult that mm. is. Yeah, because we spoke about this again on the single podcast, the accepting that actually you might not get married, mm-hmm. um, or actually accepting that the person that you married is, you know, is is hard work. <laughs> like, no matter what circumstance you find yourself in, I think we're all on this journey where we have to just, we just have to give it all up to God and say. Please, you be in control. Please, you direct where I'm supposed to go and what I'm supposed to have and what I'm not supposed to have. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just thinking about that, yeah, and what you said, Dan, is so deep because every single thing that we pray for, like we our real desires, is hard work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. Every single thing. Yeah, 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 that yeah. job you want, yeah, yeah, yeah. hard work. And then you've yeah. got it, you're like... Yeah. About that, Lord. Could we, uh, you know, yeah. literally the husband, yeah, the yeah, children, the yeah. house, yeah. like every single thing that we desire, there is so much hard work that goes into it. And sometimes, and once you're in it, there has to be a level of prayerfulness mm-hmm. because it's so hard yeah but it's what you prayed for <laughs> people like to say well, did yeah. you pray for this but this then then you, you have to that's when you rely on god exactly even in no matter what hard because everything is hard everything, everything is hard being what? single is hard being mm. a mother is hard so whatever it is is you, that is your portion mm. it's going to be hard mm. so therefore god is that please let's do this together lean mm-hmm. on me mm-hmm. let me make it less hard for you mm-hmm. or let me show you i can give you strength through the hardness mm. um but we don't we don't want the hardness we, you know no we, 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 want, the hi- we want the highlight reels isn't yeah, it? yeah 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 i yeah. want a fancy wedding you know all the pictures yeah. and all that stuff cute baby. i want to have cute babies yeah. no mess mm-hmm. you yeah, know yeah, yeah. lovely clean home Sling back into the size eight <laughs> slim, <laughs> not that slim back down over. all that kind of stuff but <laughs> but when you think about it i think but uh, people don't always, they don't see the other side of it mm. the, the desire for the thing is bigger than like you the whole the whole vision of the actual thing the whole actual mm. thing itself mm. so becoming a mum even though it was like a desire it was kind of like in the back of my mind and stuff like that but the actual becoming a mum when I can no longer now give back that child I was like mm. Whoa, wow this is mine <laughs> I gotta figure it all out <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. this child don't want to sleep tonight how am I gonna yeah yeah I want to okay. sleep tonight <laughs> baby, <laughs> baby. Can, can we go to sleep I want to sleep you know mm-hmm. but and I think it's really so in even in that situation, you have to learn to be like grateful and thankful and appreciative and prayerful and all that kind of stuff. And the people that are on the other side of that, like, well, you should just be grateful. Like when you're going through the sleepless nights, it's not so mm-hmm. easy to just be grateful. Like it's not that mm-hmm. easy. Yeah. But you do learn <laughs> through the process. Mm-hmm. Praise God for the women that, you know, it says in Titus, like the older women that teach the younger women. Because mm-hmm. I think that that's another part of purpose. If you if you don't become a, a, a physical or biological mum like there's still so much that you can still impart so, onto yeah, the other so the much. other people like be around i've got people that are like nick how can i help i'm like come and take one of the ch- take come and take all of the children come <laughs> on. like that's how you can help me right now bring me some food i don't yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. it is but if you, whatever it, whatever you can do like that's where you can that's now you fulfilling your purpose there is mm. you might not be able to do it physically mm. but there's so many other ways that you can support in the community yeah. and be still be a mother still be like a spiritual mother mm. um just still nurturing you can still fulfill that stuff about having a physical ch- a physical child mm. and there's even people that they're like Phew. i spoke to someone the other day that they were talking about having a baby 
they wanted a baby so much and now they're having a baby they're like nick i don't know how you do this this is a horrible yeah. pregnancy is horrible yeah, 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 yeah. it's been a, i've been miserable I, I, my pain tolerance is low i don't yeah. even know what i'm going to be like in childbirth i was like girl you need to fix your mindset like mm. that's what you need to do you need to d- determine like th- this is happening yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? This is happening. Go get that baby out. Yeah, baby, <laughs> coming out. And she's like, yeah, I'm thinking like they're just gonna have to listen. No, no, if no, that's no, the no. Fi- that's the last option. Mm. We're not opting to de- like come on, but just fix your mindset. Mm. Like this is what you desired. You desired yeah. this. But then this is this is the beautiful thing about it because it's really a journey for us. Mm. You know, it really teaches us something about, about our ourselves. desires. Yeah, I'm about ourselves. You. I know what I want. I want baby. I want two babies. I want four. But you know, like, we know yeah. what we want. And then, and then like, when it's here, I'm like, I didn't actually realize what it was I was going to get. Mm. Yeah. And, and what this meant for me. And, and not just the baby stage either, the throughout the years, the toddler, the child, the teenager, yep. you know, all of that. And but the the journey also is still a journey of faith mm-hmm. because I really mm-hmm. feel like, especially for a woman, mm. the whole thing, the trying to conceive, the conceive, the going through miscarriages, the having children, all of it is this, this thing that we can't control. Nope. Mm. And so for a woman, it's one of the biggest things like, you know, we have to just literally put ourselves in God's hands mm. from the very beginning. Like, Lord, will you open my womb? Mm. Lord, will you allow me to carry this baby to full term? Mm -hmm. You know, will Mm. you allow me to go? I don't have the same experience you guys have with not being able to get pregnant, but I've had multiple miscarriages. So Mm. I've had four miscarriages and an ectopic pregnancy. Wow. And one of the miscarriages, I was 16 weeks pregnant. And so you said, you know, someone you know had Mm -hmm. this experience where, you know, you have to give birth to that baby. Mm -hmm. And it's awful. It's absolutely awful. And... I honestly have to say, it, this is the most time I grappled with God. Mm-hmm. I grappled with God. And I think that's okay. I think it's okay when you're struggling with infertility and it's okay when you miscarriage to grapple with God mm-hmm. because God is like, yeah, come, come. Let's talk, let's learn, let's understand how yeah, well, this works. Yeah. Because I then have asked questions that probably wouldn't have asked before. I'm like, how much involved are you in conception? Mm -hmm. Like, how much control is there? Because we know in the Bible, they pray for a baby, you know, womb gets opened up. But then we don't see all the prayers and the tears and the pain, Mm -hmm. and and we don't hear anything about miscarriages, and I'm Mm -hmm. sure there must have been in Mm -hmm. those times. Mm -hmm. You know, so we we don't necessarily see all that in the Bible, but so we know all of this stuff is, we know all this stuff happens, and we know it's it's happening. And so I... (laughs) I mean, for me, it was just like, again, Lord, you know, mm-hmm. again. Um, so we've got um, Zakia, who's 18 months now. So I had a miscarriage just before before we had her. And we had the same kind of thing. I was having trouble with the contraception. Doctor said, you need to take it out. Took it out, boom, pregnant straight away. And we were in our 40s now. So we were like, no! <laughs> We were done. Remember the conversation? We were done. <laughs> and I cried. I mm. cried because I didn't want it. And then there was this whole, okay, let me just accept Com- it. This is God's blessings. Yeah. And we're getting excited about it now. And we're going to call the baby. We're telling the children. Boom. We go for the scan. And this dreaded words that I've heard far too many times. Sorry, there's no heartbeat. It is just like everything. Imagine how many scans. So, you know, five um miscarriages and four pregnancies there's a lot of scans Mm -hmm. and so with every scan i'm them dreaded words like i'm scared to hear the sorry there's no heartbeat and it's just you know and i just really wanted to pull that out because i don't want to dismiss anyone's Mm -hmm. pain Mm -hmm. and suffering you know with the infertility or with the miscarriage you know because it is it's devastating Mm -hmm. it's devastating and especially when You have this strong desire but i just found it's a journey that that question has come to me how why 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 even let me get pregnant in the first place if Mm -hmm. i wasn't supposed to have this child then let's Mm -hmm. let's just not get pregnant at all why get pregnant be sick get used to having and then boom so i have a miscarriage 
and then um and then like this is what happens like when you have a miscarriage you have this strong desire to want to replace that child yeah, yeah. that's gone so yeah. like yeah come on let's get pregnant again and then they're not getting pregnant again disappointed there and then okay we accept it yeah i mean we didn't want any more kids so let's just yeah we're good we're good you know we're good we're, we're good. good boom pregnant good. again <laughs> wow. yeah so and dangerous. so and then i'm like I don't want to. <laughs> and I'm like, Danielle, you don't actually know what you want. You don't know what you want. One minute you want it, then you don't. Then you want it, then you don't. And it's just, and it really taught me something about myself. And it's just like, I don't, I go with my emotions. I go with how I feel at the time. That's I right. put these things, well, I'm 40 and we don't have enough money and he's the only one working. Like, we put all of these things on it to say whether it should or shouldn't happen. And it's that do not lean on your own understanding one of my mm. favorite scriptures like whether you're gonna get it or you're not gonna get it there's that trying to lean on your own understanding and we just can't but in everything go to god speak to god about it let god mm. show you what it means what happens next um what it can what purpose what purpose is it that i've been through miscarriages you know i can help lots of other women who've been right. through miscarriages right. you know um there's there's purpose in everything that we go through and we just have to learn to trust god with that and and it's not easy it's not easy but god says i'm going to give you the strength to do it Mm -hmm. i'm going to give you the strength to get through it i'm going to give you joy again i'm going to give you hope again you're going to be able to talk about this without barlin you're gonna (laughs) one day (laughs) yeah like i'm you know that's that's gonna happen for you and So yeah, we have to we have to trust in the Lord. I mm. um, definitely agree with that one. Oh. But there's something there's a statement that I've heard one of these amazing coaches say, and he's like, if it's not working for you, it's working on you, or if it's not working on you, it's working for you. Mm. So either like way, that. it's going to be working in your favour anyway. Mm. So it's either building you or it's helping you to to do something for somebody else at some point anyway. Mm. So it's all nothing is nothing is lost, nothing is wasted. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Although it might feel like it at the time, and you're like, woe is me, or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. Like, it's always going to be beneficial mm-hmm. at some point. Mm-hmm. The, so this, I know this guy is a poet. Mm-hmm. And him and his wife, they're not they? No, they have been tired of failing. So he wrote this poem. This isn't all of it, but he just said I looked at the horizon where sea meets sky, and then I look up, and I'm like, just give us a break, big guy. Some days I wait in eager anticipation of a boat reaching port, carrying cargo of a stowaway sun, but there's mist at sea. Sometimes I feel lost at sea. It feels lost at sea like a natural born vasectomy. A forecast of Ixi is like a sun ray of hope in the distance, but why does it keep on raining? Date set yet moved back, the forecast keeps on changing. Bob Dylan must be a prophet, cause our Ixi times they are a changing. And our hope for a family's been years in the making, yet we hold on. Feels like I've been waiting for this moment all my life. Oh Lord, Phil Collins might sing it right, but I can't feel it in the air tonight. Oh Lord, we're just clinging on to calm, oh Lord, in the stormy gale and thunder. And I'm thinking, seriously, Lord, wind up the anchor, because the weight of this waiting feels like it's pulling me under. Have we missed the boat? Stop the clock, because we're not getting any younger. And I start spelling fertility like futility. Up a boat without a paddle. Or a boat, or a hope, heck, like DiCaprio and Kate Winslet, my burden feels titanic, my semen semen in a shipwreck. <laughs> See, we're on the road to conception, but fertility is not inclusive. Constant road works and he meet the gloomy grey. I recount all the ways that your goodness changed the game. Because mm. you're the anchor of my soul. See, I was the prodigal, yet you embraced me home. See, because of you, I will never be lost at sea. Because before I was conceived, you knew every hair, every freckle, every feature on me. You knew me fully. You knew the tough bits and rough bits, and still you care for me. And I say this next bit carefully. Though you care for me, it don't automatically mean my story ends with a nursery. But we hold on to a sun ray of hope, firmly yet lightly, that one day me and my precious pearl from the bottom of the sea will look lovingly into the eyes of a son that you predestined to be. 
I know my fatherhood is in its infancy. But whatever's next for Pearl and me, if it's IVF or XC, adoption is not ruled out because you adopted Team Wally. I ask this prayerfully, please prepare me. Whatever you got for the next chapter of our story, if it's with a son or a daughter or even none, help me father with your features and live like I'm your son. Wow. Big, yeah, wow. Some shivers down my spine, mm. man. Yeah, I sent him a message on Instagram. I so just asked him, I was like, did anything that we, we want specific prayer for? He's like, oh, thank you so much for reaching yeah. out, man. I was like, he just said, yeah, just pray, just keep praying for us. Yeah. yeah. It's like, cool. And I, I believe that prayer does something. The Bible shows us that these, you know, like I said, we don't see perhaps the years of prayers and tears and miscarriages that they might have had. Mm. We just see this one story, mm. they pray, God says, all right, I'm gonna open up your womb. And so I truly believe that if that is your situation, that God can open up your womb 100%. with prayer. Mm. And I always encourage other people to pray for people going through that situation. Mm. I remember going to um, a small group once and my faith wasn't even strong at this point. I'd not been going to church. I'd only just come back after the death of my dad. And I remember saying to this woman at the small group, don't ask me to read anything. Don't ask me to pray. I was, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here. Yeah, I'm just going to listen, you know, because I was just a bit like a bit upset still about my dad. And then there was this woman who had had children already, but she wanted one more. And she was now quite older. You know, her hair was grey. She was just like, I think we're not going to have another one. She had two girls and she wanted a boy. And she, she was really crying and my heart really felt for her. And... So me saying to this woman, don't ask me to pray. Mm. I felt Brilliant. to pray, mm. yeah. Mm. And I was like, I want to pray for you. She's like, yes, please. Prayed for her. Long story short, she gets pregnant. So she wow. comes running up to me when she's pregnant, like, your prayer <laughs> got me pregnant. I was like, it's not me. It's not me. Mm. And But then that just really encouraged me because I didn't even know her that mm. well. You know, I can't even actually remember her name. <sighs> but I'm like, the sincere prayer, Mm. the sincere prayer of faith mm -hmm. and I just I felt I actually felt like you're gonna get pregnant you're gonna come back to me and because that experience happened mm. I prayed for another couple they've been years and years trying to get pregnant then I've got two children wow. and I'm not saying that I'm the person to come to you know. she didn't love, she didn't <laughs> yeah. I'm the baby giver yeah. that's all God but you know I do think don't lose hope is the point mm. don't lose hope pray for your people who you know are trying to get pregnant and those who are trying to get pregnant, don't keep it a secret, you know, mm -hmm. let mm -hmm. others pray for you. And, you know, because sometimes praying for yourself is, is hard, especially when you're going through that emotion. So, mm -hmm. you know, let's let's pray for others. And yeah, I, that reminds me because that's what I was doing as well. So I was going back over some of my journals. Mm -hmm. So I think when you were saying just now, you know, pray for your people, I had written some names of people that I knew were trying for babies, mm -hmm. like in 2018 or 2019. And so when I was looking over that to see like my dark period of where I was like postnatal depression, whatever, I was like, right, there was some dark stuff in this. Oh, <laughs> but gosh. there was also some beautiful stuff in it where mm. I was praying for friends mm. um, who were trying for babies. And I'm like, oh, they had, wow. they had babies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, Lord, you're great, you know. And then so I actually like, sent a picture mm. to let them know, like, on this date, I was already praying yeah, for you. Yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? I didn't say to them, I'm praying for you guys, but just to let you know. And it was like a beautiful experience. And I was like, man, I didn't know you were praying. I was like, mm -hmm. I didn't remember I was praying, yeah. but I was clearly. And just to let you know that you, you have people that are praying for you. Yeah. And it's, it's definitely very possible. Even when you probably thought it wasn't, there were still people that were holding you up in yeah, prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and intercessory, you intercessory prayer is... Okay, so... I want to I want to touch on the the fear that we go through through pregnancy, <laughs> okay? Because that's I, I don't know about you ladies, but for me the fear the fear of miscarrying, the fear of what is my baby gonna have ten fingers and ten toes, you know, there's a lot of fears. You go to the doctors and they say you're a geriatric no. mum now. You've got you know difficult ish health issues. Like yeah. there's so much out there that can fill you with fear, 
how do we have faith over fear in pregnancy? Let's talk to the pregnant mamas out there or soon to be pregnant mamas. You gonna go first? There's no answer to this one. Yeah, no, this one's a little bit I think it's 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 like it's simple, but it's not easy <laughs> at the same time. Mm. So the simple way of putting it is like it's just trusting in God, mm. right? But it's not that easy to like actually practice it, mm. especially if you haven't grown with that kind of mindset and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So for me, um, just not even in pregnancy, but just in general, I had a lot of limiting beliefs. I had a lot of beliefs that I just believed because of, I guess, society, the way I was brought up, school, whatever it might be. Mm. And I think part of the part of the thing that helps you to win in this area of, like, of overcoming this fear thing is being able to reprogram your mind mm. and like renew your mind which I struggled with like I struggled with for a very very long time literally it wasn't until like 2019 very long into my motherhood journey that I was able to start that process mm. like I just believed a lot of things like just a lot of other things and I didn't even know how to renew my mind mm. wow. but now I understand how to do it so I'm help- that's what I help other mums do so we don't have to have fear we don't have to we can literally stand on God's word and so it's what I do with my children now. It's like we just we just be instilling the word. I don't care what you have mm. to say. There's always there's gonna be a word for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we're combating it with what did you say? Okay, we're gonna we're well, gonna word search. What, the what does the there. Bible say about that one? Okay. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about anything. Yeah, Instead, yeah. with prayer and supplication. Mm. Okay, we're gonna look. Be anxious over nothing. Okay, like we're gonna keep looking mm. for all of these scriptures and yeah. listen. If I have to say it every day. 5,000 times for the day, which I used to think was so weird, like strange, standing in the mirror, looking at myself and saying these things. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it actually helps to reprogram your mind. You have to, yeah. You have to do it. You have to speak these things over your life and affirm them and declare yeah. the word of God, like literally over you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like a battle, isn't it? A battle 100%. going on in your mind and the fear is saying, ah, if something bad's going to happen and then you have to counteract it. You have to. Actually, mm-hmm. you know, this is what Jesus did in, in, in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. What, what the word says, thus saith yeah. the Lord, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And that's yeah. what, that's that's literally been the game changer. So I think I've had pretty good pregnancies, but there's been like little things like, so I think with our first boy, they they did a scan one time and they said, oh, oh I'm not sure, oh, something with his brain. Like I said, what do you mean something with, the... well, not his, we didn't know if it was a boy. Mm-hmm. Something with the brain, we're not quite sure. We're going to have to do a couple more scans, mom. That's mm-hmm. scary to hear, man. But it's weird because like, I just had like, I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, they're like, we don't want to worry you, mum. So, I'm not, but sometimes I'm, I'm I have to worried. say these professionals, they need to reword they things. They need to, I don't know. Mm-hmm. They need I don't to know. They just say things. Cause and it, just... It, even with this one, they they did a scan. They had a couple more scans than usual because they said, there's something not quite right with the bowels, mum. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, usually it fixes itself, and you know, but we're just a bit, you know, it's not very, it should be more clear. It's kind of cloudy. I was like, okay. We don't want to worry you though, mum. It's like, sure. Mm. And so they're like, kind of, they seem a bit more high, hypersensitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, what, whatever, man. Like, God, you, you got this. I'm just not even gonna. I sometimes on. wonder about this technology because, like, back in the day when they didn't have all of these. What scans, did they do? You know, they just had to just yeah. be like, tag on. I say go. <laughs> the baby come. Out. I say go. Okay. <laughs> and I think, um, I just. I have, I don't know if it's complacent. I don't know if it's just a faith, a level of faith that I now have, mm. or it's like, yeah, I guess I just, whatever it, whatever's to be, like God will just do whatever. Mm. Like they say, oh, you want to take a test to find out if your child has Down syndrome or mm-hmm. this or that. And I'm just like, it's not really going to make a difference to be fair. It will just, mm. I guess, prepare me a little bit more. Oh, but you can terminate. Listen, that's not an option, mm. but um, thanks. Mm. Um, but it's not going to really do much for me. I believe whatever is supposed to be will, will just be. It might prep you a little bit easier because if you know that there's going to be certain complications, mm. then you're going to need to get certain things. But I'm quite, I'm just quite easy. Mm. I think because of that level of, okay, God, it's whatever you say. I'm kind of like, if the child have seven toes and what, oh, sorry, God, I just sometimes the people are like, you're just too cool, like mm. about. The whole pregnancy thing about having the, I'm like I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Am I just supposed? To, am I supposed to stress? Because mm. stress brings on extra things anyway, mm, yeah. and you can't do anything about it. Like we mm. keep saying, like God, yeah. <laughs> God is the one that runs the show at the end of the day. Yeah. So if I'm stressed about the thing now, 
what's the what difference is it going to make? It's going to give me high blood pressure. They might yeah. bring on, I don't know, preeclampsia or whatever. So I don't it's, even it's know. It's a choice that you make then. You what? choose to have to. Because you could like start Google searching and... Oh, no, I'm not doing any of you that. You know, like you could actually feed the fear and make yourself worse. Not feeding mm. those monsters. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's easy to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you can also make the choice to be like, I'm, I'm going to, you know, this. I, 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 I feel this fear. I know it's there. But let me choose to not not feed it. Let me choose to not go down that road. What about you? I'm the complete opposite. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. I was like, wow. Oh, girl. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna come and be coached by me. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm telling you. You are very laid. You are very laid back. Yeah. And I don't even know where that comes from because I used to be very highly strung. Mm. Very. Wow. So I literally, it's just like Over time, literally God God's just yeah. been working on me. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So I've had a lot of fear. Um, but my fear is more to do with my health mm. as opposed to the baby. Um, so, like, with my first, I had a lot of issues with my pelvis. So I was on um, crutches from 10 weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just painful. It was the most painful experience of my life. And I've had, like, knee surgery, like, screws in there, everything, all sorts. Um, and that was just... I feel like it was more painful than natural birth, if mm-hmm. I'm honest. Because um, you just feel like your pelvis is going to break yeah like when you're walking when you're turning when you're sitting down and you're just like this is just wild um and literally i think my daughter was about three or four months when i found out i was pregnant with my second because i didn't you know they tell you oh you can't um fall <laughs> pregnant if you're breastfeeding yeah like, that's what my grandma was saying it everyone for me. it works for me <laughs> we give thanks <laughs> it didn't work for me um Sorry. and so i felt pregnant real quick yeah um and I was so scared. I was like, Lord, you just have to take control. And I had absolutely nothing. I had no SPD, no crutches, absolutely nothing. Mm. Um, and with my third, um, I had a bit at the end, actually. I was in a wheelchair um, for the last month. But with this wow. one now, my, this pregnancy, I've had a lot of fear. Mm. Because I'm just like, I've got three kids to look after. <laughs> like, I can't be on crutches, bed bound. Like, I, I need to be able to look after myself mm-hmm. and my children. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I've had to speak to God quite a bit because even we had a, a church retreat over the weekend and I have certain things that I sleep on. I've got like a mattress topper, a pregnancy pillow, all this kind of stuff that I have to use mm-hmm. um, because otherwise I just won't have a good sleep. I won't be able to really walk um, the next day. And so anyway, had the worst sleep of my life the first night. I go into this um like the lounge bit um i'm looking out see the hairs everything and i'm in nature and i'm crying um and i said to my husband that it's in these moments that i have to literally hand over to god Mm. um and i (laughs) and i actually said to him you know and i with tears coming down my um my cheeks i said to him it's hard sometimes because i know when that crippled man went to jesus and he said if you want to you will heal me and jesus said i want to mm-hmm. and i'm always like but well, why don't you want to heal me <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't mean, Lord, you know. well, yeah why why not me mm-hmm. um and i and i was looking out and i love nature i love animals my children are the same um the six and seven year old wannabe vets um I mean, I as well know. as mummies yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> Um, and I had to realize in that moment that I had to hand it all over to God. Um, you know, second Corinthians, um, in my, I will glory in my infirmities for when I'm weak, um, then I'm strong Mm -hmm. because his strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I always have to hold on to the fact that our weaknesses then are our biggest strengths, you know, Mm -hmm. because if God (laughs) dwells in our weaknesses, that is the strongest part of us. Mm -hmm. And so for me as like having disability um, and issues with like my knees, my hips, just my joints, um, that's my strongest aspect um, because that's what God uses. Mm. Um, And so, but I have to constantly, daily hand it over to him. Um, And it can be very scary because I can be in situations um, like that day where I was going to do the icebreaker, um, the very first thing in the morning and then take the kids off. Um, it was supposed to be a nature walk and then um, do a picture. 
I just thought, I don't know how I'm going to be walking doing all of this, but God was good, it rained. So we had, <laughs> Come on. We had to change it up, ended Come up on, painting God. instead. He's like, no, I, um, I can't walk today. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and he kept me, like literally for that whole day, he kept me. Um, and I was able to get through the whole week because my husband was like, maybe we'll go home, get your pregnancy, it's like two hours, well, an hour and a half away, get the pregnancy pillow, get the te- um, the mattress topper, all of that so that you can sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, we're going to have to go. Um, and I said, let's just see. And yeah, God kept me that whole weekend. Good. Um, and it was just having the faith that he would keep me because mm-hmm. he's placed stuff on my heart to be able to do. So for me to be at a Christian event, to be like, oh, sorry, guys, um, I'm not doing this. this body can't do it. <laughs> but God can. Good God. Um, and mm. that's where I think my faith over fear has to kind of take over because yeah. there's so much fear around, is my body going to last? Is this going to happen? Mm. And most of the time it shouldn't, but it does. So yeah. I like that because it's a, it's a daily, mm. it's a daily giving yourself. It's not just this one time prayer, Lord, throughout my pregnancy, take away fear. It's a daily coming to God mm-hmm. and saying, Lord, help me with my fear. And I think that's okay because perhaps we might think, oh, I'm fearing again. Mm. So therefore I'm lacking in faith. It's okay. It's okay. Bring it to God. God doesn't mm. say only this amount of time you bring me your fears. Mm. You know, he's like, no, bring me your fears every day because I... You know, obviously having so many miscarriages and obviously that was my biggest fear. Mm. I'm going to miscarry. I'm going to lose this baby. And yeah, and it's, it's a daily thing because of the appointments, because of the whatever. Oh, what does this mucus mean? And mm. what, is, what does this mm. symptom mean? It's just constant. It's tiring. It's mm. actually tiring. And I would love to just have the Nicole type thing and just be like I'm cool whatever um, but there still is peace to be had God promises mm. us that peace that what's the surpasses all, surpasses all, all understanding, understanding. Mm. God says that that peace is available to us he's mm. given it to us as a gift mm-hmm. the Bible says mm. so therefore we wake up every day we we pray for that day ahead we pray for when that fear comes up when the doctor speaks we pray before we go in the doctors we pray for when we come out of the doctor's mm. room it's, it's a constant and and hopefully like you said you speak them scriptures over mm. you and hopefully there's a there's a faith that can be built mm. that then can counteract that that prayer and and if it's a daily battle then it's a daily win mm. it should mm. be a daily win like them and yeah just always giving god thanks for because you're growing in that mm-hmm. whether you see it or not you are mm-hmm. growing in that so I just want to end with um giving some advice to the woman out there who is watching who is pregnant let's have some encouraging words for the woman who's pregnant perhaps maybe a first time pregnancy who hasn't done all of this yet who doesn't have the experience that we have <laughs> what advice and encouragement could you give to a pregnant woman um, I think for me, there there are two things. I think one of the things are be very mindful of your the input. So what is being put into you? So where is it coming from? The things that you're feeding yourself, it's going to help you to have a certain outlook. So your your mindset or your yeah your belief system, your values, they're all based on all the input that you've had, like literally. Mm-hmm the sum total of your habits and everything that you've experienced up until this point that point of your pregnancy or you know trying to become pregnant or whatever it might be it's a it's just the whole melting pot of everything that you've ever experienced so be more, you have to be very mindful aware of the things that you have been feeding yourself to know where that fear or whatever it might be that is coming from mm. and so um your circle is one of the things that I'll definitely tell you to be very mindful of because you have a lot of well-meaning people Mm. that have a lot to say Mm -hmm. um and every every pregnancy is different like every person is different every fingerprint is different every child is different so as much as people have all these wonderful things to say and suggest and you know helpful um things you have to tread this thing with God fully and completely because he knows exactly what you need exactly the child that you're going to have exactly what your child is going to need Mm. um and so there is no manual in terms of that like there's no book that everyone gets when you are pregnant or when you're leaving the hospital or anything like that and so it's literally a journey of faith with god Mm. so be very mindful of what it is that is going into you 
um, because I remember, as I, I forgot to say, one of the things that was really, um, that keeps coming to my mind was even when I was diagnosed with have not being able to have a child, a friend of mine I worked with, he was, he seemed to be like very close to God at the time. And he wrote in a birthday card, I think it was, or a Christmas card to me that my future was green. And I was like, what does that even mean? He said, don't worry, you'll see. And I was like, okay, a bit weird. And I saw like, obviously this is like years later, like five, seven years later when I have my first child, he came back to me and was like, you remember that card that I wrote? I said, yeah. He said, what do you think of it now? I said, hey. But I said, you th-. he said, God already showed me. You might not wow. have believed it. You might not have seen it, but I saw it. But he said, I can't just say to you, don't worry, you're going to have babies. I had to, you know, mm. and it was for me to kind of work it out. So be very mindful of the people that you have around you because they speak things into you as well. Mm. Whether unknowingly, unknowingly, positive or negative, these things, they seeds are sown regardless. Mm. And so your, your network, your circle, your people, like be very mindful. You want people that are going to be speaking life yeah. over you yeah, declaring yeah, yeah. god's word yeah. and all that kind of stuff over you and i said to him you see your word because look how look how green i am now <laughs> <laughs> you know and he says it's all right it's all right he every so often i update him he's like what's going on i said yep there's another one he said see what i mean you're green, you see how green? And i said yeah you didn't say when the green finishes and all, but anyway we just we, we give thanks but just be very mindful of that your circle the people that you have around you your input um and the scripture that i I think really is very fitting is um, 2 Corinthians, I think it's 10, 4 and 5 when it talks about taking every thought captive. Mm. And that, um, because our, the weapons, like the the devil's really good at getting our minds, Mm. (laughs) which is the most powerful thing. Like if you believe something, no one can tell you anything different. Like I've got too many experiences of God coming through for me before for anyone to tell me that your God don't exist and he ain't real and he can't. Um, Mm -hmm. so for me it's easy but for people that don't have that experience yet you have to borrow somebody else's belief Mm -hmm. so if you need to you can borrow some of mine I got got some (laughs) but um, yeah I got a lot Um, but to take every thought captive and for me that all that means it doesn't mean just the negative thoughts it means everything every thought everything just take it captive for a second just question it is that something does it align with god's word because if it don't mm. i need to like reject it that needs to be rejected that, that needs to mm. go into guantanamo bay like <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't coming out again do you know what i mean yeah. so take it captive like it has to be held hostage we're not we're not keeping it we're not entertaining it anymore and that's what that scripture says to me so if it's not aligning with what god is saying truthfully and for your life get rid of it Mm. Um, but question all of the things because sometimes they sound good but they're not accurate they're not the truth they're not you know they just they're nice good they feel good things put it question it all mm. and then if it's okay you let it go like you let it loose in your mind let it re- rain free because it's something that you should be standing on mm. but if, you, if it's not something you should be standing on Guantanamo Bay it <laughs> thank you that's mm. good I think for me um is to show yourself grace yeah. um because i don't know about you guys but especially in this pregnancy where i've been really sick i felt bad by not being able to eat the healthy things that i want to eat because yeah. <laughs> it just makes me feel sick um real sick and uh, you know the things that i can keep down um especially at the beginning was literally toast I was yeah. having toast constantly. Yeah. And even sometimes that was a bit iffy. Tried salad, tried water, tried fruit. Couldn't have it all. And I was just crying. And I had to remind myself that I have to show myself, I'm not doing this. <laughs> like, I'm not doing this to my body. As much as I want to give my baby these nutrients and all of that, if you can't, you can't. Yeah. And God's grace is sufficient. And he is able to just give that baby what it needs. Yeah. Um, and that's not just in just what we eat. It's with our feelings, um, with our energy levels, even when, you know, even as stress. mothers that, yeah, mm-hmm. we're, we're mothers already. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we don't even have that time for our, our children that are right here. Um, not the, let alone the ones in our bellies. And mm-hmm. just knowing that you can have that grace and allowing ourselves to be in the moment 
and to know that this isn't this is just a this is a season mm. it is a season that's it um huh. and it will pass um then the baby will like you'll literally forget about it all yeah. <laughs> like it will yeah. all oh, be yeah. gone just in memory yeah exactly and the baby comes and you know your a new season a new season a, new, a completely new season <laughs> a sleepless yeah, season yeah, <laughs> exactly um so yeah just always extending grace to yourself um because we often do it to other people you know yeah. oh don't worry about it you know do what yeah. you can do and all. Yeah. but to ourselves now it's a different story like, so you can give more <laughs> exactly you should be doing more um so yeah just extend grace to yourself um is my um words of advice and mine my text i did share it earlier is second corinthians 12 9 but to 9 to 10 and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Mm-hmm. So it was just to encourage all the mummies that have just not the best pregnancies, um where the feelings kick in you know the sickness the the pains and whatever it is that christ literally has got you Mm. and in those weak moments he's going to make you strong Mm. yes thank you perfect i think my advice would would definitely need to to speak to the the fear um or the unknown there's there's lots of unknowns and um I really believe that as a woman who's been given the gift of pregnancy, this is a this is a perfect opportunity for you to grow in your faith and grow your relationship with God. You perhaps just thinking about growing your baby mm. and preparing for that, but actually it's a beautiful opportunity for you to to grow in faith. And so with the fears and all the unknowns that come, what type of mother am I going to be? Am I going to be able to afford it? Perhaps this wasn't even planned. Perhaps you're an older mother. Perhaps your your partner's left you and you're going to have to do it on your own. Like there's there's so many different scenarios. And so therefore, the, the different fears that are going to come in in regards to the unknown, what's mm. going to happen next what's going to happen with the baby perhaps the baby is going to be sick and have to be in that incubator Mm. for eight days perhaps the baby is going to be born with with only seven fingers like there's so many unknowns and we could really dwell on the fears Mm. um but the scripture that i have is isaiah 41 10 do not fear for i am with you Mm. do not be dismayed for i am your god I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Mm -hmm. That means that you might not see or might not know the answer. You might not know what to do. You might not know how you're going to do it. You know, it is the unknown, but God knows and God has promised. This is a promise. I am with you. Mm. Um, I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to help you. Yeah, you've got a promise there from God who's saying, I'm going to help you with whatever it is that's on your mind. I'm going to help you. And so, you know, if you're going to hold on to a scripture, you, you can pick. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, this is a because. good one. Yeah. <laughs> like just to say, all right, Lord, you know, like I said before, it's a daily battle. All right, Lord, I'm giving these fears, this situation, this pregnancy, mm. I'm giving it all to you because you said you was going to help me. You said you was going to strengthen me. And so I'm going to lean on that. I'm going to rely on your word. Mm. Um, let's be, when we say that we're women of faith, let's let's be that. Let's be mm. a woman of faith. Let's let's choose. And that's all it is. It's a choice. Not a feeling. Literally. Not a feeling. It's a choice. It's a choice to say, I'm feeling these fears, but I, I, I choose your word. Mm-hmm. I choose to trust you um, with whatever is coming next. Mm. And, and that's the God we've got with us. So Amen. it's a beautiful blessing. Ladies, thank Amen. you so much for joining me. Thank you for this conversation. Lovely. If some mamas want some coaching from you, where can they go to oh. find that? Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> um, right, so you can find me on Instagram, Little Acorns to Mighty Oaks. On Instagram, I'm also on Facebook, Nicole Matthew Marius. 
and I've got a YouTube channel as well. Um, little acorns to my T Oaks. So I'll give all that stuff to Dan, and you can put that all. Yeah, I'll there. put it in the description so you can get some coaching, some encouragement. Mm. Could some mamas reach out to you? There might 100%, be some. One hundred percent. I'm always open. Like my DMs are open. The email is open. I got a Facebook group where we talk about all this kind of stuff as well. Yeah, so, nice. um, yeah, yeah. If you want to get in touch? Yeah, I'm yeah, in. yeah. Okay. And what about women who like the sound of your ministry mm. and all this lovely stuff? Where um, can they follow? your ministry yeah so there's the iron sharpens iron ministry that's on instagram as well um we have a community um it's like a whatsapp community um there's quite a lot of people in there actually yeah. um <laughs> over 200 or something like that um but we post um we have like daily prayers uh, like i said bible book club which is um reading a chapter um every week on a tuesday uh we have a daily bread group that read a chapter a day um so whichever kind of reader you are there's options there mm. um and this oh. is good for new mamas as yeah well. exactly or pregnant mothers mm-hmm. in general this yeah is good. if you just want to jump on one morning it's at 6 30 in the morning on weekdays for an hour or 7 30 on the weekends or bank holidays um it's just a great way to you don't even have to speak you could just type in your prayer requests and you'll have people praying over you yeah, over yeah, you yeah. over yeah, your yeah. request um, so yeah um, mm. I'll give that to you as well yeah, Dan, yeah, and then yeah. you can share it'll that. be in the description box okay ladies I really hope that this has been helpful for you um, I hope you've been encouraged inspired and blessed um, oh one more thing that I forgot that we must say you know like when you go to the professionals the doctors they're gonna say some stuff that <laughs> might induce the fear okay you need to choose God's word over their word 100%, you need to choose 100%. God's word over their word so um yes, the if there's anything you're gonna yeah if, if anything you're gonna take from this is 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 have faith mm. and it's, it's gonna be a ride it's gonna be a journey not always an easy one but you can do it you got this all right thank you for joining Okay, so we've just finished our podcast. We're talking about pregnancy and being some sexy mamas. <laughs> pregnancy mamas. <laughs> this is for you pregnant ladies or those who want to be pregnant, those who've had difficulties with pregnancy. This podcast is for you. So make sure you check it out. Because I am Danielle and she is Shakira. And she is Nicole. Don't want to miss this one.